Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to Moscone, everybody. This is theCUBE. theCUBE has been here for, this is day three of VMworld 2015. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. A lot of signal, a lot of noise too, but a lot of signal around storage. Ed Walsh is here, he's back, he's the CEO of Catalogic, and Bina Holman is Vice President of IBM uh, Storage and Software Defined. Welcome, great to see you again. Bina, just, we just saw you last week in, uh, in Marlboro at Wikibon headquarters. We got the deep dive under NDA, and now you've you know, announced everything, and yeah. Ed, good to see you again. Likewise. Well, thanks for coming on. So, big show for you guys. You know, yeah. you're, you're coming out, we had Eric Herzog on, he had the Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> that's you know, right. No Hawaiian shirt for you. That's you right, know. yeah, yeah. Right. Hawaiian shirt was a theme, <laughs> yeah. right, Hawaiian, yeah. That's good, you guys uh, making some noise, that's good marketing. So what's going on across the street at the IBM booth? Yeah, we've got, you know, it's been a really good show for us. Mm. Um, we've got uh, quite a bit of um, uh, traffic and, you know, client focus. Um, we've got our whole family of storage offerings that out on the, on the floor from our store-wise offerings through Spectrum and our flash systems, of course. We also have our VersaStack offering, you know, the joint offering with Cisco and VersaStack, our power and systems D. So quite a bit of uh, new stuff out there that we're, we're demoing. And how about, uh, what's going on with Catalogic? We've seen you a couple times, we really haven't, it was so early on, we didn't sure. really talk about what's going on across the street, but, uh, so I hear it's crazy, I haven't been able to no, get I, over I, there. No, great traffic, I think it's better than any year we've seen. So in the booths, in the first two days, we had over 2,200 unique people coming through, and actually we uh, had a little um, theater where we actually had over 750 people listen for 10 minutes, which is a long time to get people to do. So very engaged individuals, but also a lot of foot traffic, so it's great. So what kind of, what kind of discussions are going on, Bina? Sure. Um, people must be talking about you know, some of the announcements and you know, the future of VMware yeah. and you know, how, to, how to solve various problems, hybrid cloud and so forth. But yeah. what's the practitioner discussion like? What are they, yeah, what are they asking? Yeah, a lot, a lot of discussions. And you know, um, as we talk to a lot of the clients, it's really around uh, some of the business transformations, all of the dynamics going on in the industry and the space, new applications, new workloads, so businesses trying to look to transform their environment. But really the, the discussions are also around you know, investment protection. They want to be able to take their existing environments, transform them, and be able to do rapid innovation and deploy new services, right? So those have been kind of the conversa conversations have been focused on those topics. And really, that's where our focus is, to help our clients take those existing environments, transform them to really adopt to some of the new applications, and when you think about the existing environments, right, they've got, typically, there's the traditional environments, right? And those are often running some of the, the traditional workloads. Um, really, oftentimes, they can be very um, optimized. So things around virtualization, around data tiering, lifecycle management, those types of things are very much the topic of discussion. And then helping also then bridge to some of the, the new environments that are needed from the, for some of the applications um, that, are, that are born on the cloud, those types of you know, analytics that really require um, elastic, agile infrastructure so that um, developers and, you know, uh, can rapidly deploy new environments and deliver new applications very quickly. Of course, bridging those two environments is very important as well, managing that data holistically and protecting the environment. We've had a lot of discussion and conversations about hybrid environments mm -hmm. as well. So that's kind of the, the genesis of the conversation. That's a good overview. Yeah. I, and I love the investment protection uh, comment, Ed, because that kind of yeah. brings me to what you guys are doing. I mean, sure. you're all about that are protecting that, that, we're getting a return on the existing assets. Yeah. So right. you're, you're leveraging the existing infrastructure, it might be yeah. snapshots, and et cetera, um, to sort of solve other problems. Maybe talk a little bit about how you're doing that in an IBM context. Sure, so uh, we announced this week that we're integrating our copy data management onto IBM's whole host of their platforms, which is a fantastic. Everything from their high-end uh, flash arrays, V9000, 
the whole store-wise line from 3,000 to 7,000 SVC Flash Copy Manager. But what we do is just like in all environments, we don't make you move your storage. We use your current investments, you know, so get a return on investment. You already have your storage and your hypervisor. We simply add our software into the environment. We agentsly discover the environment, and then we give you some key use cases. So in the uh, IBM example, for their environments, we're able to come in there, again, agentlessly, very simple, and give them three major things. Lifecycle management, just easier way to drop OPEX, driving the way you create copies and manage them through the life cycle. Second thing is the automation orchestration. Everyone's looking for ways to drop their OPEX and get more agility, but things like doing daily DR. Again, don't change your storage, don't change your hypervisor, but we can give you daily DR. Or refresh test dev as often as you do snapshots, or DevOps automation, give the power to the app team to actually do these snapshots. Uh, or analytics, you know, how do you get uh, near real-time data access for analytics? So those are the things we're able to provide, but without changing out what you have. Yeah. In fact, seamlessly work on the environment and provide those type of capabilities. And then the third, which I was about to go through, is self-service. Organizations are trying to reduce their OPEX by doing things like template for provisioning. Allow the users to provision their own storage. We're able to, let's say, gold, silver, bronze type of storage templates for a particular application group. Some based on roles, base access, they can do that. So provisioning. But also, the more advanced users are usually saying, hey, I'll use the same roles, base access and API to do things like DR, but let the app team do DR. Who's better to check DR than the app team themselves? Or, well, DevOps. The app team needs to drive the DevOps, and we provide that through API, again, across the whole IBM portfolio of storage. So, I wonder if we can unpack some of those. Sure. And Bina, you mentioned lifecycle management as well. So, add some color to, to that discussion. Um, what does that mean, lifecycle management, and how does that drop to the bottom line? Well, so, the biggest thing about copies, right? So, everyone talks about copy, you know, we do copy management, and it's, uh, everyone has copy data. You create copies for good reasons, right? For test dev, DR, mm -hmm. analytics. The thing is, uh, too much of a good thing's a bad thing. All the tools you have with all this complexity, heterogeneous, is you're easy to create copies, but never manage them. So, what happens is IDC study, if you have one copy of data, you end up with more than 50. So, what happens if you have a life cycle management, instead of a script that just creates and then you can't manage it, you can bring it in an environment and we're doing the pub, we're managing through the public APIs the same process, but the platform's able to do life cycle. Plan, provision, leverage them for the automated use cases, but also end of life them and report on SLA. So, I set them up to do certain things, local recover points, how many of them, RPO, RTO, re remote or in a hybrid cloud, but it's hard to get are you actually meeting your SLAs? So that's the other thing you get from the platform. And again, all, the, all we're leveraging is all the power that the StoreWise family has. They do the snapshots, they do replications. We're just using the public APIs. That's why we're completely agentless and don't change things. But the life cycle is really where the problem is, and we're able to do that because we're actually in place. We're running on your production storage. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the, the, the portfolio. And I want to come back yeah, to automation sure. and self-service. But So the IBM portfolio has has evolved, and it's you know you guys now now have a pretty pretty solid lineup from you know from cradle to grave really. Yeah. So maybe get, to give us an overview of sort of what we're looking at here sure, from the portfolio sure. and maybe recent announcements too. So yeah, let's, let's yeah. Touch so on those. you know our portfolio um, it ranges as you said from end to end, right? So from a primary storage you know, perspective, um, our our traditional our optimized appliances around store wise XIV DS eight thousand. Of course, you know our tape and SAN offerings, but also as we look to um, um, software-defined storage. Earlier this year, we introduced a complete set of software-defined storage offerings, our Spectrum portfolio, right? That includes not just um, the storage components, but also from a data protection, from a management perspective, as well as archiving some of the lifecycle management. And then we've got our strategy and focus around the flash systems, as you know. We have the, the um, um, IBM flash systems that came through our, our TMS acquisition. We built that out, and now we have a complete offer, a family of flash systems offerings, right? Um, uh, V9000 being the, the latest edition of the, of the uh, flash systems to the family. That's based on, of course, our SAN volume controller from a software perspective, as well as our, our, our uh, flash, uh, tier zero flash systems. So that's kind of the, the full spectrum of the portfolio. And from an announcements perspective, as you know, as we talked um, when we were in Boston, we've had a number of, of key announcements this quarter around um, our data protection. 
being able to leverage um, uh, cloud as another tier of storage, um, um, software being one of the, the, the key uh, cloud providers. Um, we also introduce on our virtualization, um, uh, Spectrum Virtualize offering, and one of the things we discussed here at, at VMware, right, the uh, SRM high availability uh, stretch cluster uh, support, and then of course the VVOL offerings. Uh, we also have our Spectrum Control uh, Insights, which is really um, a cloud services offering on a soft layer that allows you to get insights and manage your on-premise um, storage infrastructure. Yeah, you guys had a couple sessions here. Right? We did, Which... we did. And on flash systems, right, we had the, uh, Mike Kuhn mm -hmm. talked about it a little bit yesterday, the project capstone with VMware, HP, and, right. and IBM um, around uh, some of the, the performance benchmarks that, that were uh, presented there. So, so I wonder if we could come back to sort of your three, lifecycle management, automation, and self-service, Ed. Sure. The, the, Bina was talking a lot about Flash just recently. That was sure. a big part of the, the portfolio. Yeah. It's a very high growth area. There's a relationship between Flash Absolutely. and just sort of copy data management, catalogs, et cetera, particularly as it relates to one of the use cases that you talked about, test dev. Right. Being able to give developers a more current, you know, production currency yeah. level of, of, of data to work on. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit, how you enable that and what the business outcome is? Yeah, so um, without copy data management, what you do today is if someone needs a test dev, you create a copy and you move it into another environment and you use a separate environment. But it's very hard to keep that mm -hmm. environment up to date. Well, what you have is in city A, you'll have a copy of production data and you're replicating it in city B or building B or the, set, the cluster over it, you'll have an application consistent copy of what production looked like a minute ago or an hour ago. And it's just sitting there waiting to be used. So we use the APIs of VMware, but also the storage itself and actually create copies and you basically refresh test dev environments from that copy without impacting production, and what you're able to do is now keep that up to date all the time. So you're able to refresh those mount points as often as you do in snapshots, and you keep it up to date. So you're not working on old test dev data, and then DevOps is just the next step, right? So um, in these environments, what we do, the, uh, the automation we provide is we talk to VMware, we talk to the storage, we provide a fenced network environment, bring up so many servers in a particular order, last good snapshot, bring it up and they can use it. DevOps is now hit a button and you promote to production and you do another snap and you do a cycle of development. So either enhanced test dev, just getting quicker time, you know, using the more recent data but doing it in an automated fashion doesn't kill the storage team because we're using or, uh, automation to do that. And just to clarify, you said we, when you said we create copies, you mean we as an IBM creates the copies, right, right through snapshots and you yep. get whatever granularity, you, I mean sure you get very you know, the granular levels of, of timing, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I could take snaps every, I don't know, what's the minimum level of granular, five minutes or 15 minutes yeah, or? Yeah, or yeah, I mean, as uh, frequent as the clients need, and then we have the space efficient snapshots, so only, you know, taking the changes that are needed from a snapshot perspective. Right, okay, and, and so then, so. When, uh, when, and then in my, when my test dev team is done, they're deployed, what often happens is, well, yes, they're space efficient, but they add up and they, they stay do. there. Right, so you go back and say, okay, now it's back to the life cycle piece. Right. Which and we is clean them up. Them. So either you're giving the next mount point the next day or whenever you want to do it weekly, but it's very easy to, because you're already up to date because you have this mirror copy going. Very easy to do that automation, but also uh, it easy, it's very easy to tear it down without any resources. And that piece of it, it gets yep. me, me the third one, that's self-service for the, the dev team? or So all we're doing, so a lot of this is available for the IT team, yep. and really the storage team, to put all these workflows together. You can do it ad hoc, you can do it scheduled, daily DR, test dev, but what you can do is through roles-based access in our API, our REST API, you can literally give certain developers or development team a set of templates, you know, gold, you know, gold, silver, bronze, and allow them to actually do self-provisioning, but also they can actually call upon doing daily DR, test dev. The key thing is that the REST API, they can only see what the storage administrator allowed them to see, but they can be very powerful. They can do their own DevOps. And that self-service helps both the app team move faster, less frustrated with the storage team, but the storage team is outside of the mundane, keeping up with things, so they can actually do their day job, and it moves faster, but also you get the control of cost, which is what the CIO wants. Great, so there's a lot of talk at this event about hybrid cloud. Uh, VMware on day one gave some you know, examples of, of hybrid cloud and you know, laying out their vision of the future. 
you know, some of it's ready today, some of it's sort of futures. We'll see it, we'll see, I'm sure we'll see announcements next year that really sort of tie to what we saw today. But nonetheless, they're putting forward that, that vision. I could see, Ed, your capability being important in a cloud environment. If I put putting stuff up into the public cloud, I, I want to keep track of it there too. Um, uh, so, but Bina, I want to ask you, when you talk to customers, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned in the booth discussions, yeah. people are talking about hybrid cloud. What are they talking about when they talk about hybrid cloud? What are they actually doing? Yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of conversations around VR, um, a lot of conversations around, you know, clients really wanting uh, flexible consumption models. So, you know, whether it's consuming storage as, as optimized appliances or software only to leverage your existing, you know, infrastructure they might have available, all the way up to service in a, in a cloud, right? And being able to offer solutions that provide each of those options. So for example, our XIV offering. Um, today you can purchase it as a optimized appliance. That software is also available for clients to purchase as software only to leverage on any x86 kind of an environment and also available as a service and soft layer, mm -hmm. right? So now having that flexibility and licensing model, consumption model, to be able to leverage that consistent set of capabilities in different consumption models is pretty powerful, right? It gives the clients that uh, flexibility that they need for, for different uh, use cases. Now, I, 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 just to clarify, so you support, I know vast swaths of the portfolio, but mm -hmm. not the entire thing. Do you support XIV now? Not this XIV time? yet, right, right. but that's but, soon but, to come but out. But there's right. no, okay, so that's roadmap. Yeah, roadmap. But there's no technological reason. Not at all. In fact, we, uh, we talked about it. So we started in February with one storage um, platform supported, and now we have over nine. So uh, our provider model allows us to quickly add these different platforms. Well, so I'm kind of reminded, Ed, when you're running store-wise, you know, we had that, they had that compression technology, and yeah. we had this discussion, we said, well, is there any reason it can't be applied to virtually anything? And, yeah. you know, remember it was an appliance yep. at the time, yeah. and now but it really didn't have to be, now it's sort of embedded. I would think that the, 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 the technology that yeah. you guys have developed has the same yeah. sort of application here, right? And it won't be in an array, right? Because, right, compression's now in the B9000, it's in the whole SVC line, the store-wise line, now there's an XIV, okay. so you're seeing it going across the portfolio. In this case, it's software-defined, IBM has a very strong software-defined portfolio that's there today. We're just another software-defined focusing specifically on different challenges about round copy management. It's a perfect complement. We leverage their layer and their APIs to do things. So it's in place. You don't have to change it. We're not changing the way you replicate snapshot or leverage any of the IBM por por portfolio. We're adding that automation orchestration piece. And there's no, you, you said it several times, but just to clarify, no agents. Uh, you know, and that's a key thing. So we don't make you change anything. We don't make you deploy agents. We're literally just talking to the public APIs. You download the software. Uh, you just register your storage controllers and your vCenters, which you do that once. After that, that's all we're doing. There's no data flowing through us, so there's no latency in a flash environment. Uh, also, uh, we don't make you move your storage onto a different platform to get these values. We do it in place is a term we do, on your storage. And if you have a copy data management problem, it's actually on your primary, so we solve that, but also give you all the automation use cases that people kind of associate with copy management, and, the and, automated, you know? And you're not messing with my performance, nope. right? In fact, for the Flash team, you don't want anything in between you. So yeah. all, we, can, we can't slow down a Flash machine. We're literally talking to their APIs, which is critical, so. Right, it's programmatic. Yep. Yeah. And you awesome. know, to add to Ed's comments, so as you know, SCC uh, leadership, uh, virtualization right. environment, store-wise family in our V9000, it's built off on that, that software stack. And the architecture of it, you talked about real-time compression, right? Um, when you virtualize um, heterogeneous storage, we virtualize a 300 plus IBM, non-IBM hybrid you know, storage, storage environments uh, or arrays. And so with, with SAN volume controller virtualization, as you apply real-time compression, yeah. all of the, the, the storage pool that's underneath that get the benefit. Similarly, with copy data management, as you layer the copy data management on top of that software stack, then all of the, the storage underneath get that benefit as well. Awesome, all right, we have to leave it there. I love, thank you, Bina and Ed, for coming on theCUBE. Love the collaboration, solving some problems together. You know, you can't do it alone. You know, as, uh, as Carl Eschenbach said, you know, you're ready for any, probably alone, probably not, but together, you know, we can make it happen. So, really appreciate you guys coming on thank and sharing you. your perspectives, thanks. Thank you. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back after this brief word. We're live from Moscone Center. This is theCUBE.